Um, so my name is Alex Matei. I'm the digital and health manager in Bupa. Uh, Katia Volkova, she's our machine learning expert in our team. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today um, is giving you a bit of an overview of the things we've tried internally in Bupa in uh, trying to leverage what machine learning and deep learning can do for us uh, and how they can help us improve our healthcare delivery and our services. So uh, Katia will go into more details about the uh, the specific applications, but first I wanted to give you a bit of context about what Bupa is and what are we doing and what our aims, strategic aims. So we're quite big, we have 29 million customers and we operate over 190 countries and that can give you an idea of the scale that we need to think about when we're thinking of uh, digital services and how many people we need to engage. Um, and the other thing that is different is that we are a company driven by purpose. So all the profit that we make gets reinvested and um, we aim to improve and to deliver better services to our consumers and to achieve our purpose. So we don't have any stakeholders. And the purpose is uh, helping people have longer, healthier and happier lives. Um, one of the best services uh, that we are thinking can help us achieve this is digital coaching. So we're looking at technologies that can uh, help us deliver digital coaching on a large scale and make this effective. Uh, so there are three criteria that we're looking for. Uh, we're looking at a really unique um, customer experience and customer engagement because we want to keep people engaged and we want to uh, discover new ways in which we can deliver this experience. And uh, as a side note, these circles look very similar to one of the previous presentations, which was good to see. Uh, secondly, we're looking at behavior change. So we, want, we really want to be grounded into uh, science and theory and to collect and deliver evidence about the effectiveness of our services. And finally, we're looking at machine learning to personalize and to allow us to deliver the most effective intervention for each particular consumer. So we're trying to understand and predict paths and trajectories and then uh, deliver the right thing at the right time for everyone. Um, so a bit of about the applications, we are going to go for a rather broad view just to touch upon the things that we're doing uh, and to give you an idea of what we're looking at. So usually we structure our services uh, on three pillars which uh, match our brand promise. So we're looking at things that can uh, help us know the customer better, like using image recognition as a way of input or having real conversations, uh, so natural language understanding. We're also looking to steer people towards better behavior. So things that are relevant for them and how we can customize the behavior change program to really match them. And this is another area where machine learning uh, can help a lot and deep learning as well. And finally, we're looking at questions and answer systems. So how can we identify and provide the most relevant information to somebody that has questions? So this is the overall picture. Uh, I will let Katya now go into each of the specific applications and give you the more technical details. Thanks. So yeah, I will zoom in into several prototypes that we're building. First example is self-monitoring. Um, for example, Microsoft and Google and SmartPlay, they already also delved into these projects where, and probably many people would agree, wouldn't it be nice if you could take a picture with your smartphone and it could immediately tell you what food you're eating, what are the nutrients, is it good for you or not. Um, so we are building something similar. However, there are several problems. So imagine you have an ice cream, nice. If you use a um, nutrition database and you look up ice cream there, well, the problem with these, well, it's not a problem, it's a feature of the database is that they have thousands of ice creams and other products. Um, and these um, items are often location specific, there's servings, there's um, various brand names. So if you look up ice cream, you have hundreds of results, which is not exactly what you were looking for because you don't want to specify it further and further. You could use general image recognition. However, if you're using a general model, it's trained for very broad coverage and it's not specific enough. So it will be, in a way, accurate. It will give you t um, results like food, sweet, dessert, chocolate, and ice cream will probably be somewhere there as well. Uh, but you need to get rid of all the irrelevant results that are not specific enough for your case. So um, we were looking for a solution to probably train something ourselves to find this middle ground, the missing middle ground. We wanted to, um, we wanted our 
system to be easy to train, uh, preferably through a web interface or an API. And we wanted to test a range of available algorithms to decide which one is better. It didn't have to be deep learning by default, just something that works best. Um, and we wanted, of course, to evaluate it. And then the resulting product should be easy to use. Um, it should be easy to access through an API, should be easy to scale, um, and it should be able to improve itself, learn on its uh, results and constant input from the customers. So a possible pip pipeline could look like this. You take a picture, the image uh, recognition, object recognition tells you, oh, it's a croissant. The croissant result gets passed uh, onto a general uh, nutrition database, which gives you approximate nutrition value. But we also focus on the user journey to be as easy as possible, as friendly as possible. Really, I don't care how much calcium there is in the croissant. I want to know whether it's good for me or not. And we calculated, well, based on research from Oxford, we calculated a score based on the nutrients, healthy nutrients and unhealthy nutrients. So when you look at the croissant through your camera, it can tell you hey, you know what, it's not good for you. It's only 2.3 out of possible 10. And you know why? Because it has lots of saturated fat, it has white flour. But if you go for it, if you eat it, well, your average score is not so bad because you've been eating uh, apples and salads and healthy lean meat, so it's 6.4. But you still can choose not to eat it, right? So that's, that's uh, an approximate pipeline this. We've used MetaMind to train our own classifier. We've focused on breakfast foods for now. We have about 19 classes and well you can see the accuracy and we use the deep learning in this case. Uh, the accuracy is around 80 percent which is good um, especially taking into consideration that for every uh, class we have from 250 to less than 100 instances so we were sourcing the um, pictures that were open uh, not, not copyrighted. So that's already a good start. Um, and so the app could then tell you whether you're about to have something healthy, something not so good, because that gives you more, in, uh, more feedback. So cereal is actually not always good for you because it has lots of sugar. And um, we all love chocolate cake, but chocolate cake doesn't love us back. It's not very healthy. <laughs> All right, so another um, prototype is we would like to build something that you could conversation with. So we could use Bing or Google Speech um, to take speech as input. Then it recognizes the intent or request, what you are looking for. Um, it provides you with uh, an answer, it reacts to you. Um, and the answer is convert it into speech, so it's text-to-speech. And it's in a loop, of course, so you can have a dialogue, essentially. So again, here, we were looking for, for example, in the case of understanding intent, we were looking for a system that would be um, able to derive intent from examples. Um, it should infer um, intent from new utterances it has never seen before. Again, deep learning seems to be a good approach. Uh, to this, um, we want it to be domain specific. We don't, we don't want to um, create a friend for you, a digital friend. We want you to have real friends. But we, um, it should be domain specific so that it can consult you on well being and health because this is our purpose. Um, and it needs to remember things about you during the conversation so that every iteration is not just a bland tabula rasa. Uh, in terms of understanding voice, it would be great to have something that understands, of course, different languages and accents. It should ho hopefully have real-time translation and transcription for further training. And of course, it should be able to synthesize speech quickly. So I have a small example for you. This is, again, just a prototype, something that we built very, very quickly. Um, if we could please start the video or uh, start the audio. Hello. Greetings. What is my diabetes risk score? Our smart chat will ask you questions relating to your health so we can calculate your diabetes risk score. What is your age? 65. Are you male or female? I'm a man. What is your ethnicity? 
white. And we Does can, any of we your skip, immediate yeah. family? So it, oh, yeah. So it collects information uh -huh. about you and then it gives you a risk score. So wow. one point twenty. You are a 65 years old male of white European ethnicity with some history of diabetes. Your waist circumference is 95 centimeters and you have a BMI of 30.8. You have high blood pressure. Your risk level is high. There is a 1 in 14 chance that you have type 2 diabetes now. You need to make an appointment with your GP to discuss this risk and to have a simple blood test to measure your blood glucose level. Yeah, so I should see a doctor very soon. And well, this is of course also evidence-based. There is, there is, there are formulas how you can measure this score based on various parameters. So this could be really helpful because many people will, would be overweight and they would know that they are even at risk. And it's really easy to manage this risk and to steer into the right path and actually never get type 2 diabetes, which is a really serious uh, illness. And third, uh, we have also uh, prototypes for behavior change and personalized behavior change. So this is already an ongoing clinical trial for smoking cessation. So we have an app that helps you to, sp to stand smoke free for 28 days. <clears throat> there are different interventions you can engage in to help you to manage cravings. And uh, it, these interventions have been clinically proven to be effective in many scenarios. So um, the next step, so we already have, as I said, this uh, clinical trial ongoing, but we would like to improve the app further by making it adapt to you and um, personalize and recommend you things that would be best for you, most effective for you personally. So uh, we've used in this case uh, the H2O platform for um, various um, machine learning algorithms. Um, our data set is still small, but it's growing. Um, so we have about 200 uh, quit attempts, 24 features, various demographic data from the users that they submitted. Also, uh, the way they interact with the app, we um, gather this data and measure it. Um, so in this case, we used out-of-the-box supervised binary classification. Uh, we, we tried different algorithms, but deep learning was still the best, uh, with the best accuracy. So already after 10 epochs, and this doesn't improve with more epochs, um, significantly, it's about 14% uh, um, error only already on such a small data set. And when we predict it on, an, on new data, it's about 22% error maximum. We can also, this is the range of our accuracy so far. And the important features, so here we're trying to predict whether the user is likely to quit, um, to fail quitting smoking. So is likely to smoke within these 28 days. And we try to predict it very, very quickly uh, within the first three days of the interaction with the app. So we can also discover the useful features that we can look into specifically. So this is already the first step. We can tell very quickly whether, you're, whether you need additional help, for example, whether you need more intense supervision, more notifications from the app. But we want to personalize this further. So, and to do that, we can look into which persona as a user you're falling into. Are you, for example, a middle-aged, working class uh, female who has very strong cravings, or are you a male student who is actually a very light smoker at the moment? We can also look how you interact with the app to uh, improve your user experience further. Um, we can see which interventions you prefer and recommend them to you on or similar interventions. And we can also, we're looking into building an app that would be constant, uh, constantly aware of the context. So where you are, not just in geographical location, but are you at work, are you at home, um, are you in a transition? And we col correlate this with high cravings that you've reported previously so that we can anticipate your cravings and say, hey, um, listen to this music or play this game. So you don't even think about the cigarettes in the end. So yeah, this is, this is it. This is our wonderful team. Um, we're small, but we're very active. And yeah, thank you for your attention. You. So any questions?
No? Um, perhaps I have one. Just um, do we? Hello? Okay. Uh, go ahead. Um, thanks. Um, in the uh, food uh, picture analysis thing, which looked pretty cool, um, once you get the characteristics of the food, how do you compute the overall out of 10 score? Um, there is a very simple formula uh, that was <coughs> developed by um, a research team in Oxford. Um, so their initial goal was to determine whether um, a food could be advertised on TV for kids or not. And what they did is basically you have good nutrients, uh, which would be, I think, protein and fiber. And you have bad, pro uh, bad nutrients that was the total amount of calories, saturated fat, sugar. I think that's it. And it also matters whether the food is a fruit, nut, a vegetable, or something else. And so based on this information, which is available in most uh, databases, you calculate the score, and then you just convert it into a scale from 1 to 10. And then you define the thresholds from like green, very good, and then amber, okay, and red you should avoid. There are some other approaches that, um, so for example, I know that up, uh, uh, app from Jawbone has this approach as well, but I don't know if that's the exact same formula that you're using. Um, Net food diary as well, so yeah, but we want to make it very almost instantaneous. More questions? Hi. Hi. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hi. So any given food might be worse for certain people than other people, like depending on their, on their medical background. So are you able to give them a score based on the specific person and that how it relates to that specific food? Or is it much more high level at the moment? Or do you have plans to make it more specific like that? So uh, there are two things. As a general uh, goal, uh, the point is that all the behavior change programs that we want to put out there, they should understand uh, the context of each individual user. Um, so eventually, yes. But on the other hand, we, we look at scale. So we want to have something that can be used by as many people as possible. Um, so the plan is to start from something easy to relate with that would make sense for most people, and then try to add this increased context awareness that would help us be even more effective in what we're trying to do. Yes, but of course it will not be very difficult to filter certain foods when the user indicates that they are allergic to certain categories or if, if they're already type 2 diabetic, then we could, of course, um, change, personalize the scores fairly easily. Anyone else? There is one, yeah, two. Hi. Um, so. I missed the first couple of minutes, so you might have mentioned this uh, in the beginning, but um, you seem to use quite a lot of services, uh, external services for your processing. Uh, I was just wondering how, um, I, I'm guessing not all of them are open source, so how, how do you scale costs in regards uh, to that? So, first of all, that was one of our aims. Our aims was to see what is there commercially available at the moment. Uh, and kind of evaluate and give feedback on whether those services are uh, of good enough quality to actually embed them into a service that goes live. Um, we are, so one of the criteria that we are using to evaluate available technologies is cost, because we are interested in scale and we are aware of different pricing models and we take this into consideration. However, there, there's many that, uh, I think because in many fields um, we are, we're still at beginning, uh, there are many things available. Uh, for us to test the technologies. And I think that's important because it increases awareness and it makes it easier to, to promote these sort of <coughs> things to people. Thank you. Thank you, it's a very interesting talk and great to see the applications uh, that you're looking at. Um, you know, this is a, a deep learning summit and one of the advantages people usually talk about for deep learning is that it doesn't rely on any domain-specific knowledge in advance. It's just the raw data and those representations. But I think in this domain, as you said, you really want to take full advantage of uh, domain knowledge and, uh, and domain-specific models. So how are you thinking about using domain, those sort of domain knowledge in the context of these uh, deep learning systems? I think it, it, a lot of it for any system, it depends on the input. So if you're training, for example, object recognition on all the pictures you can find in the world, then you get a general model, but if you 
already restrained to start with to food items or animals, species, for example, then you get a domain-specific model. So we just we hope that uh, specific models will be more accurate, which is what we're looking for. Um, that's that's basically the reasoning behind this. And it's the the training sample that we've seen in the previous talk. So kind of taking advantage of whatever uh, features you have specific to the domain helps. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.